You're joining me today at Shearsby Valley Lakes near Leicester, where I'm going to sit with Joe Carus, and he's going to teach me how to pole fish with paste. I've not really been a big advocate of commercial fisheries. It's not really something I've done. I've certainly never even attempted to try and master paste fishing, which Joe's done to a great length and degree. So I'm going to sit with him today and we're going to walk through the tactics how to catch these fish. The fish are feeding, the water's warm, it's a lovely mild day, we've got a nice breeze on, I can hear the fish moving behind me. We've had two weeks of prolonged weather and that means the dinner bell's ringing and it's time for pace fishing. So I'm going to walk through each step by step with Joe and ask him some of the questions that intrigue me and I'm sure are intriguing you and how he approaches catching a net full of fish from a venue like this. Right Joe, so this method is so definitive, the actual name of the method is just the bait, it's yep. the word paste. Yep. So that tells me that the be all and end all of this method is that. Is that? What is it? Right, the actual paste you use, there's loads of different things you can use for it. It's up to you really, you can use ground pellets, you can use ground bait, you can use dedicated paste mixes, there's loads of them on the market. It's up to you, but fundamentally I look for a really fine ground bait. Okay. Um, that is like the base. I use thatchers, which I actually put for a flower sieve. All you need to look for, when, if you use a ground bait, look for a ground bait that doesn't have too much crushed expander in it. Because when you do, the paste doesn't hold together, if that makes sense. So when you, okay. if you make a ball of crushed expander, you can almost feel it growing Expand, in your hand. Expanded. Yeah. yeah. Whereas yeah. if you get a, uh, a ball of thatchers, for example, and squeeze it, it goes dunk and stays. Yeah. And so that's, that's what more looking. like feed pellets than it is expanders. Yeah, and there's actual fish meal in it. And that also helps Powder, it which to helps bind it a little it, yeah. bit. But the fineness, is everything. and I've looked at that, and you've obviously sieved it right off, mm -hmm. and that then, I presume, helps it to grip together more, yep. like all fine things. Yeah. Yeah, it, goes it just helps of, bind. But that's not sticky. It's not sticky. You look, your hands are pretty much clean. That's something that's glaringly obvious to me, that it's not sticky, but yet it's soft. And it's soft and pliable, and like that's like putty. a working texture. A like putty. putty. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I just use Thatchers, um, like I said, there's loads of good ones in there, Swim Stim Green is yeah. a pretty legendary paste mix, Yeah. Uh, Special G Green is a really good one. Yeah, there's a lot of ground baits, but they ones. need to be fine, and if but they're not the fine, sieve them off. Fine fish meal ground bait, and sieve it off. So what's this then? This is one of my little little secrets, this is me. Can you remember years ago, you used to get, there was a paste called Hydro Paste that Van der Nijn used to do. You used to come yeah. in a little packet, and you cut it and fill the water. That was stringy. And it was dead stringy. Yeah. Well. I got my thinking cap on as I do. And what I was having was my pace was getting knocked off too easy. When you get a lot of fish, a lot of F1s, a lot of carp in the edge, your pace breaks down in like a minute or two. But when there's a lot of fish about, it gets knocked off and your floats forever. You're having to rebate all the time. So I thought, I don't want to change what I'm using. I want to hold it together. So yeah. I started using wheat gluten, yeah. just small amounts of it, yeah. about, say if I use a 250 mil pot of dry ground bait, I'll put about 125 mil of this in, roughly. Yeah. Um, and it just holds it together that bit longer. Yeah. If you put too much of it in, it goes like pizza dough. Oh, you don't yeah. want that. No, too it, rubbery. Too rubbery. But you just want it, it just helps hold it together. Yeah, because if it were too like stuck together, that would, wouldn't you? It your, hook, your hook, yeah. Your hook wouldn't pull through yeah. it, because then it's uh, plasticine. Sounds like a different bait then. Like plasticine, yeah, yeah and you're not striking Whereas through. I want a lovely soft hook bait that they come and slurp in and your yeah. hook strikes through cleanly. But that, just a little bit, holds it together. Just that little bit extra. So I've got a bit longer in the water. Say I'm fishing out there where it's a bit deeper. Yeah. That just gives me a little bit longer in the water. Oh, brilliant. That's so it's just, just, and that, you can't go far wrong with that too, those two. And that's, a bag of that lasts you ages. And that's, that, and that's how you make paste. But of course, you can't just say, just go and fish like that. There's lots to it, and I think you're going to walk us through hmm. all the different things. And we can talk a little bit more about bait as we're fishing. Yep. Uh, and as you use, you know, and you feed, I'm going to ask you how to feed. Because I know you've obviously got another paste on there, which is just something slightly different consistency. Yeah. Which you're trying. It's just something I'm trying, actually, uh, which yep. is just, and I've used it quite a lot before, but for a different thing. And that is just literally feed pellets yep. that I've poured a boiling, uh, boiling water on in a tub like that, one of these Tupperwares that I'm obsessed with, left it overnight, and then I've worked it with my fingers, and I've got this lovely smooth paste. Which and that I, is smooth. And, I, and I, I'll tell you what, that feels beautiful to me. Yeah, yeah, well, and, we'll talk about and that. And that is exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Because the world is your oyster with this. You can do whatever you want. And that's why I mentioned fishing. it, because them two, those, obviously, if I've, 
I've seen pace fishing mm. before. I'm, I've not really tried it, uh, and I think I'll be up at it. That feels lovely, doesn't it? But you kind of go, yeah, it's not sticking to my hands. And I think it probably... And that's two completely different yeah, mixes. It probably t speaks volumes, doesn't it, really? Yeah. That I'm an experienced pace angler, and yet I'm still playing. Yes. And yeah. I think that's the beauty of it. You can come up with your own little concoctions, your own yeah. little mixes, stuff Brilliant. that you have confidence in, Yeah. and give it a go, because it all works, but soft paste, fine ingredients, you can't go far wrong. Amazing. Right, Joe, um, pole fishing, that means rigs. Yep. Now, I know there's lots and lots of theories about rigs, but you've certainly mastered pace fishing. Tell us how you would do it. Show us your rigs. Well, the rigs are actual simplicity. They cannot get any more simple. Um, but I fish with no shot down the line, which is a little bit of a fib because I've got a couple there under the float, but I believe believe in having no shot interfering with the bait yeah so there's two they're just two number eight to help the float thing, cock yeah. that's all okay yeah just, yeah, just to get it, it yeah, yeah just to make it go over yeah otherwise it might pull the paste off um but i don't have anything down at the bottom right end. so that's really unusual and i yep. think that is the myth and the confusion that everybody has and it took me a long time because i've spoke to you before about it but mm -hmm. it took me a long time to get my head around it i'm right in saying that the paste yep is your weight is my weight just tell, tell us about that and how that actually so effectively, works with you, your rig in your head if you think about it i've got a plummet on at all times the bait the weight of the paste is essentially the weight of the plummet in it roughly yeah yeah so i'm using that to anchor my floating position now the fish take it with such confidence it's totally different to any other bait that you don't need any telltale shot or anything because they're on and because the, the paste is so heavy as a bait yeah it anchors and you're your using position. that as your shot when they pick your paste up it zooms under or it completely pops up. lifts so mm. if your bait comes off your float will pop up so you know because obviously that's a big thing with pace fishing if i was fishing with a dotted down float with obviously shot interfering with it my bait could come off and i wouldn't know whereas if my bait comes off today as we'll show the float will lift up and yeah. i know to ship in and, re and rebate so having nothing down here interfering i believe brilliant is everything. So, so my simple brain trying to kind of compute that your paste is actually part of your rig yeah and that and i think putting it like that kind of explains when people go oh, how do i shot a paste rig well you don't you, you don't. use your paste to shot your paste rig and there are exceptions obviously if you went onto a venue and you used our 0.5 float for instance yeah and you were fishing right out there where it's deep eight foot yeah obviously you're getting into trouble because you've because got a lot of water a, yeah so you need something a bit of a keel down below so i actually use a a bulk probably two foot from the hook in that instance yeah just to help me get a bit of stability so as a rule of thumb i mean what's that is that three four and a half four foot? four foot that's four foot yeah exactly four foot um up so, to five foot i'd be happy not having anything down my line brilliant so that's a great golden yep. sort of rule of thumb yep. that is yeah and then if above that then you've got to look at the heavier float yeah um, but to be honest if i'm fishing in that situation i'll generally use a different bait i think it's a You'd best use hard five foot on. or under yeah so yeah. that, that's my golden rule. Is, is that because it's easier to fish paste yeah. in shallower water? Yeah. yeah. yeah it is. Because yeah. if it's just more efficient. If, you, if you're if you having to rebate all the time and, and fish in eight foot water, you're going to miss a lot more bites. And that's really interesting for everybody watching because I think people go, oh, I go to this venue and it's this deep, and, the, and but I want to fish paste. Yeah. You go, well, don't fish paste it. It's too deep. It's too deep, yeah. Use, use the water to your advantage. Yeah. Don't try and make life difficult for yeah. you. And of course, once they start feeding on paste, because I'm right in saying paste, I'm sure there's a few exceptions, but paste is best when the water's warm. Water's warm. I, I, t I tend to not even consider it until once the fish have spawned. They're actually having a little bit of a go still, but generally, mid to the end of May through to September, that is your window. Yeah, and shallow water's warm, so shallow water paste fishing. Yeah. Four foot, five foot, five foot's a deep swim. Is five that what we're saying? Deep swim. I don't like Brilliant. fishing in five Brilliant. foot. Brilliant. And everything's strong. I think that's one thing about pace. You're catching big fish. That's yeah. one of the appeals of it. Yeah. You're fishing big fish. So I actually use five pound detection. Don't mess around. Which is all twenty. All so it's a nice strong line. Yep. Yeah, all yeah. the way through to the hook, and I use a size ten hook. Direct. Direct. Yeah. And I have no clamps. Okay. Everything's strong. I use the eighteen plus elastic. I'm looking for big fish. I don't want to mess around. And everything's in perfect balance. Yeah, and because you're using its paste, they're not too worried about uh, fine lines. No. The chances are you're not going to get broke, so you don't need to worry about a rig. But because the rigs are so simple, you've not spent all night, every night, <laughs> shutting up all these delicate well, rigs. I've used this rig twice before. 
brilliant. Because everything's very, so very durable, durable on it. You've got some back shot. I've got some back shot above. I don't normally do this, but we've got a bit of a wind in our face today. Yep. And it's important to keep this part still. So I just put that on as a bit of an anchor. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't normally. Just keep your line tight. Just to, just to give me something to hang brilliant. on to rather than me float. Brilliant. And what's that great big thing at the top? Because I'm sure everybody's <laughs> wondering what it is. This is me, uh, me pole paste pot. You've, right. Obviously, you've got to get your face to the swim because yep. it's soft. It'll just fall off the hook if I was to ship it out. So I use <laughs> one of these nice subtle pots. Yeah, that's handy. Um, from our little ones, uh, Easter egg. For toys. It's got Massive toys. Massive Kinder egg, yeah, and yep. it's perfect. But it serves a purpose. Paste for shin. You're trying to catch the fish on the bottom. So I don't like feeding by hand. I don't like feeding regularly. I like to dump an amount in and fish it out. Brilliant. So yeah. I. That's every fifth so fish or every fifth cast, I'll maybe put some bait in. Got you. But it'll be a decent amount. Brilliant. Look forward to seeing that. <laughs> and then uh, then it's the margins mix. So two rigs, that's all we've got today. And this is where I have my most fun in the margin. Because this is this is where... How deep is that? Is that two foot? Two foot, yeah. Brilliant. And this is, uh, this is where you catch same elastic, same pot, same main line, same hook. But then we've got one of these little beauties on. The JT that's... margin. Yeah. And that is an unusual looking float. Yeah. So talk us through it. What? Again, it actually came from fishing this venue. And I was doing a lot of margin pace fishing at the time with conventional pace floats with thick tips. Mm -hmm. And the problem I was finding, when you get a lot of fish in the edge, mooching around, the buoyancy in the float and the bristle, every time you got a liner, which you get a lot of, you get a stab under, and it actually the buoyancy of the float would pull the hook out of the paste. Because obviously the, buoyancy, the float doesn't want to go under because of the buoyancy in it. Yeah. Because that's the anchor. Yep. So of course, if a fish is running into your line, and it's like think, and it pull your paste off. I see. So I came up with this idea. God, it must be six years ago now. Of using a really thin bristle. Yep. With no resistance. Yeah. And it transformed the results. Brilliant. And so, so what you're saying is that the resistance in the bristle yep. is less than the resistance of your hook in your paste. So, so it's more likely to pull your bristle down. It pulls down my bristle down than rather than pulling the hook out of the paste. And we'll hope we'll set up a little camera down there when we get some fish going down there, and it's your float will go under, it'll slide back up, but your pace is still on, and it makes such a difference. I that's can't so tell you how simple. much that makes a difference. That's so simple. That's mm. incredible. And it looks unconventional because it's a little weird little float. Yeah, but we're fishing but so in two effective. foot of water. It's so effective. Poles over top. Yeah. And ultimately, I think what I said earlier, your paste is a fundamental part of your rig. I'm actually saying that your paste is your rig mm. and you could almost fish without a float but you yep. want something to look you need, at you, you want to read it, yeah. you read it so designing a float that's basically <laughs> not carrying any shot it's just there to so visual you can aid. visually see it and then therefore making it like that so it doesn't interfere is a bit of a uh, genius, I, I also really. I also think that um, when you're fishing in the margins obviously the fish brush up against bolts and you'll have all had it when you're fishing conventional they'll brush up against your rig and bolt off at a million miles an hour because they feel the shot I think because I've got nothing down the line I think the fish are very comfortable in the swim yeah brilliant does that make sense yeah absolutely so yeah strong durable it's as simple as it can be don't get any simpler mate don't get any simpler and always the best method is always simple aren't they yeah brilliant right Joe so obviously we're here at Shears Bay and it's your typical commercial fisheries um, obviously loads of uh, features and margins, fish topping, plenty of room to go at. How, how are you going to choose and why, why are you going to choose where you're going to fish? Just talk me through your thought process on your swim. I think obviously we touched on depth briefly in the rig section. Yeah. Um, and this lake has got, it's about eight foot in the middle and then it shallows up to 18 inches right in the margin. Okay. And it's just a gradual slope. Now, I just experience has taught me about that five foot and under rule, and to find that is just a top kit and one. And it's okay. actually four foot there on a, exactly a top kit and one. Yeah. And experience has taught me that that is the best depth here, apart from the margin. So yeah. that's quite flexible. I'll change depth throughout the day, which we did at Cobhouse. Yeah, yeah, well, you've uh, come up and down, yeah. depending on the fish. Uh, that's exactly how I fish here. Yeah. But as a rule, if I can find four to five foot, then I'll always start there. So, just for simplicity, and uh, for me, it's like, do I set my float at four foot and find it, or have I gone right any, anywhere between three and a half to five foot, or different, certainly four foot to five foot? I've put my rig on, and you've found four, yep. which is deep enough. Yep. 
on the top, top kit in one box. section. Yeah. So you're fishing comfy. You've not tried to find five foot because I've, that might have gone halfway down the section, yeah. and there's no need to go so deep. No four foot's deep enough to catch the fish that aren't in the margins because four foot and you know margins at 18 inches that's a vast difference. A massive and difference. Yeah. I think I'm right in saying that from what I've learnt about fishing in general, but especially commercials and especially carp, they sit at specific depths and yeah. we don't know what that's going to be. So you've picked a depth that you think they might be at warm enough but deep enough and far enough away from bank. I've always found here that they're either there or they're there. Do you know what I mean? They're, they're, yeah. That's where they live. They're, they don't really want to be out there too deep. Or they yeah, maybe are, but unless they around. Unless yeah, they're shallow. Around. Yeah. They don't want to feed out there on the bottom, it's too deep. No. They want to be, if they're going to feed, they're going to feed here or they're going to feed there. They can't wait to come in really, can they? But in. we're here banging, making a noise. Yeah, uh, but, and we'll show it as later on, you'll notice as we're setting up, the fish have been out there. Yeah. They'll be here soon. And then as the day goes on, as you catch them, because I believe that catching fish attracts other fish on these sort of venues. Yeah. As we're splashing around, the colour the fish will naturally come in and you'll start seeing them up and down this margin. So the fish tell us where to fish. Brilliant. And um, I, how are you going to feed that? How are you going to kick it off? Um, I'm a big believer in the big pot when I'm pace fishing. Yeah. I know it's frowned upon these days, getting the big pot out. Everyone wants to dink in two pellets. Not interested in that when it comes to paste. I want bait on the bottom and I want to fish it out. Okay. Um, and then build again. Yeah. Um, because if I... Miss bites are the enemy to pace anglers. It's the nightmare. It's the biggest nightmare. If I'm throwing bait in over the top, then fish could be all over the place. I'd rather put an amount in, uh, get them down. You can't you, catch fish on the bottom if they're up there. No, yeah, because you're not fishing pace anywhere other than on the, bottom. the bottom. I know you've done it in shallow, this, yeah, but that's a different, a different story. Totally but, different ball game. So you don't want any bait between the bottom and the top. No, you want it all on bottom. I want it as rooted as I can, and that's why I won't be feeding every chuck. So. That, that to me isn't. It's obvious, but not obvious, not obvious to everybody yeah. because we've all got this habit of throwing, yeah. trying to draw fish in. Oh, it's, I'm a nightmare for picking my catty up, throwing bait in, but for paste, there's no need. Brilliant, no love need. it. So, <laughs> hemp, which is obviously okay. That's not, not that's not paste, and it's not ground bait. It's not the most common. No, but it's just it's something I I grew up with. Really good paste anglers, Daryl Taylor particularly, and he always used hemp, and I've always used hemp, and I and it just works really well. Um, it keeps them grubbing around, they love it, don't they? We're not sure why, but fish I love think them. I think it just roots to the bottom. And it's heavy. And it's heavy. So it ticks a lot of boxes. Yeah. And I'll probably put in one or two bits of paste. And that is it, like half a pot. Got it, yeah. And one thing about paste fishing, it's all very instant. So if they're on it, you'll get signs that they're on it straight away. Right. It's not okay. one of those things where you've got to prime and prime and prime. And no, not like the... pinging to no, a pellet no, no, and building is, a swim. If they're on paste, you'll know about it within one or two chucks. Amazing. Because they're I, so attracted to it. Yeah. That when they, when it's right, they're on it straight away. So I would imagine it won't take us too long to get some action. So everything's done. I put the pot on the water. I don't drop it in from a height because I'm trying to get the fish on the bottom. Yeah. Everything's done to get the fish on the bottom. Makes complete sense. Yeah. I, as all, you know, good anglers do, you've... Tried to break it down. Well, you've considered what you're trying to achieve. Um, you're going to put a piece of paste on which is going to sink to the bottom <coughs> so why would you want to fish anywhere yeah. else uh, and that's how you're fed basics just putting the bait on obviously yeah. makes a big difference do always this is why we have the old bowl of water here because it's so much easier when you've got wet on your hands so little dunk grab your piece of paste work it a little bit lay your paste hook in the bottom of it fold it over and then just before I'm about to ship it out and a little that's dunk a, that's quite a big piece, in my mind. Um, I'm starting on the not, small not piece. No, I can tell how you just laugh. You're not, you don't <laughs> think it's big at all. That's, um, I'm going to say it's like a walnut size, but I'm talking about a walnut while it's still in shelf. <laughs> um, but when you picked it up and flattened it out, it was as big as a tangerine. And, um, right, how quick do you want to catch it? <laughs> so I'm thinking... Well, that's not very good because you've obviously not plumbed it up right, but I think a fish had obviously took it yeah. as you were dropping it in. Yeah, that, that was a, a great demonstration, but a bad one. <laughs> that's um, but that's incredible. That emphasizes my point. That is genuinely our first chuck today, and the oh, no, fish no, are no, on the bait immediately. That is the first chuck. Don't we I'm haven't set that up? Um, and the fish are on the bait immediately, and that is when paste is at its best. 
I, re I remember years ago um, when I did a bit of commercial, you know, fishing. I went up to Woodlands at Thursk and you'd catch fish shallow. We used to fish meat. Uh, funnily enough, we used to lose feed out there to make a noise. Yeah, it was really good though. And then you'd turn up one weekend and you'd catch nothing. You'd foul up about six fish, and Daryl Taylor had win the match. Yeah. Or um, that's him, Phil yeah, Sellers, yeah. yeah. Um, and they devastate it because the fish didn't want anything else apart from paste. Yep. And it's always when it's hot. Um, yep. I don't know what it is. Days when you don't get a bite on other baits, paste is the, is the Yeah, answer. Yeah, that's how it were. You couldn't catch anything, Shelley. You couldn't catch anything oh, on pellets on the deck or meat. You could only catch on paste. Lovely. Five pounder to start the proceedings, I'd say. Right, right in the top lip. Yeah. The, is it because when I think back now to them days, I think, why wouldn't I just chuck a method feed out with ground bait on? Yeah. Which, when I look at paste, I kind of think, yeah, that's like a ground bait method. Yeah. Tommy always says about that, and uh, he always says when to put ground bait on your method feeder is when paste anglers are catching, and he's yeah. dead right. And it's they're just going around sucking everything up. They're not picking at bait. Yeah. They're actually. Slurping. I think I've, I've heard the word gill feeding, they're gill just feeding, yeah. over top of bait and they're just sucking everything in and sucking everything in and they're comfortable, they're happy and everything that goes in they want to pick up and and because paste is something that they're not they're not picking it up, they're sucking it up aren't they? Well nothing's more attractive than ground bait is it? No. Like you put ground bait in any fishery or any river, you're going to get fish in your swim. I mean look at this. So I just saw that float settle obviously yep. the pace it was sinking sinking and the fact is that the way you've set your float that pace is holding your your float down yeah well one thing we've got to contend with a bit today is the aerator is on yeah so the water's moving so a the bit, water's so. actually moving from left to right so it's going to take me a few trucks just to get settled out where we are but i think i could just see that under water and yeah it it were kind of Oh, dinking a bit because it's a great in its mouth. What thing, um, floats of this nature where we've purposely put the stem right through to the bristle to remove as much buoyancy out of the float as we can. Yeah. Similar principle. It gives you more time when the float's under the water to just delay the strike a little bit because last thing you want to do is strike every little indication. I it, noticed then that... That was under for ages. Yeah, and it come. That yeah. It went on the first time. It come back up, but you're watching it. You're reading it. I'm watching it going, and I'm letting it go because what's the worst that could happen? It might just come back up. Yeah. Whereas, and I'll miss the bite. Whereas if I just leave it, the fish is on. But there's no resistance in my float. No. It's just going to keep going under. So just do me a massive <laughs> favour. Just pop me a plummet on. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt no, because obviously. No, just pop me a plummet and just show me. We've got a sloping situation going on. Yeah. 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 Is what we've got going on, Mick. Which is why it were nice to fish to the end of your yeah. section, so you're always in the right place. You're taking that to the end of end of your elbow. Yeah, I was fish there. <laughs> see that? Yeah, I did see. It, yeah. So I'm just perfect. So you. So if I go past, it's going to go see. away. Yeah, if slope. I pop it a little bit too close, yeah, it's, it's going to be out. It's another either. two inches up. Which, before the float went under, the fish had knocked it down the slope a bit, which was why my float had gone. Yeah. Right down. Brilliant. So ordinarily, without the paste on, your float's going to sit up right in the air. With your paste on, it's going to sit at the bottom of that bristle. Yeah. But because it's on a slope, it might just pull your bristle yeah. down a little bit further. Because we've done everything yeah. to make our paste stay on a bit longer. Yeah. Obviously, it does actually pull you. And we've got no buoyancy in the float. So the paste will go down and your float will go with it. Obviously, if you Get can it, find yeah. a flat bottom, amazing. It's flat in the edge, so we'll have a great time down there. But these are the these are the small intricacies that you've kind of got to put up with with pace fishing. Yeah, yeah. And that, I suppose and my on floats a, on under the water so often, <laughs> but because I'm used to it, I know what to look for. On a flat bottom, I'm going to say it'd be slightly easier if yeah. you're a beginner to this. Yeah. Um, but you're making that look easy, I must admit. So that's just settling. I can see your float stuck right up. Yeah. And then your pace just pulled it down, and you've let the float go over the top of pace, so that then you've got the right. This is a bit ridiculous, isn't it? I might even have gone myself. <laughs> um, you see the bite, it was just a whoosh. Yeah, yeah, you can, from here you can tell. The difference. That, yeah, because it's a little bit faster, because I'm presuming it's sucking it in, and that's that jab. Yeah. 
there's no rush to strike. I think that's the one thing that I try and get across best I can today. There's never a rush to strike on a pace bike. They're not going to spit it out. It's not a pellet that they're just going to suck and blow out. They're just going to take it in and eat it. So there's no rush to strike. Just take your time. It's the temptation is to strike at everything. Don't. No. That's, that's where you, you don't miss pace bikes. You miss liners that look like pace bikes. Got you. Does that make sense? No, complete sense. Complete sense. And you see, we've got three fish. I haven't put any more bait in yet. No, because of course... I put a decent amount of pin. There's a fair amount of pace, and I'm sure that fish has yeah. um, eaten most of it because you've caught it, but I reckon that a, bit a lot of it's probably blown, kind of, a, yeah. blown a bit out as you've struck into it and coughed a bit up, and so therefore there's sort of paste and ground bait and aroma and smell coming off that. Next time you put your pace, I just want to notice something you're doing, and um, which you obviously do naturally, which is why I like these little sessions when we sit together because... I'm sat here looking with a spare set of eyes almost because mm. I'm, not, I'm not looking at the floor, I'm looking at you and what you're doing. And th there's been two liners here since that's gone in. Pace is at bottom, little bit of a sink, little bit of a sink. Can you be tempted to, oh, that's going to be on? And you just get, it's just leaning. Just I can see in. why you've put them back short. Oh, <laughs> best one. Now, I would have said that would have bite. That, yeah, it looked a good Because bite it would have fastened a bit of a dither. Yeah. A, Bit of a jab. I had that little, that's just why I had a go at it because I thought, do you know what, that looks like a bite to me. That's what you're doing, what I've noticed. So you're wetting your hand first, grabbing pace, yep. moulding it, but then you're I dipping your hand it. in the water. What's that doing? Just seals it. It's like, it makes it smooth. I think the water almost cradles it to the bottom. Does that make sense? Yep. Uh, and I think just sealing it just helps. It helps it leaves the pot smoother. Yeah, it just helps everything. Mm. It's one of the great tips from the from the great man, Andy Finlay, who's obviously the pioneer of this method. It's one of the things I picked up from him, and it's held me in good stead, that is. So we really, that air area is actually pulling the rig a long way that way. Yeah, it were, yeah. But we're all right at that. We'll still get a... And there's loads of indications. Oh, loads. There? But there always is with paste, especially once, a, once they're on it. I can see where that back shot's coming into play now, because mm. that's just allowing you... Not to, you're not holding your float tight, you're holding your line tight, and then the line between your float and your back shots is just at the right tension, so it's not interfering with how it's fishing. And that bit of slack line, I suppose, helps with liners because it's not pulling against your, well, your rig. One thing, and obviously a lot of fisheries, there's obviously small fish to contend with as well, which a lot of the indications will be from small fish. Yeah. Crusions, a lot of crusions in this lake. So you'll get a lot of missed bites off them. Got you. I don't think that's a cruise. Yeah. Well, you've missed, you've missed one, but you've hooked all the rest, so. Yeah, I might foul at this one, though, mate. Oh, I see him, yeah. He's a bit rattly. <laughs> ah! <laughs> not only foul. <laughs> little crew, eh? This is not staged, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> He's a cute little fella, isn't he? Isn't he? Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, I'm actually going to feed again now. Because you've had that cruise, yeah? Because I've had that cruise, yeah. Let's pop some more empty. And that's obviously instinctive because you've fair play to you. I mean I know that obviously we've we've got a lot of fish in this lake and they're probably gonna to come to the pace that's coming off and the aroma and all the rest of it, but you've you've not been too quick to pile baiting because no. ultimately you, you want to catch them, not send them crazy. But you are putting enough bait to hold them there and then you'd probably think they've cleared that out or, or washed it down. Shelf a You've got to bit. kind of be sensible because, as we all know, too much bait can be a uh, oh a killer or a curse. But I, I'll tell you what thing that is a massive um, part of pace fishing that I think is new spots within your spot. I know that sounds ridiculous, but fresh lake bed is really important. Why do you think that is? I just think it like starts again. I think your peg starts again. So like, if I start often here, for example, in matches. I'll have a great first hour doing this, like unbelievable. A bit like what's happening here. We're getting loads of action. Yeah. And all of a sudden it'll just go weird. You'll miss every bite. You'll foul look a few. And I don't know what it is, but I'll just start again a little bit closer to me. That was a that was that was textbook pace bite. That Saw was. that. Um, and start again on a fresh bottom, a bit closer, and it'll be it'll be like starting your swim all over again. I think that's because the fish are, they can taste. They get a bit the bit the pace that's left over, get, all the M that's there. I think they just get sush you out a little bit and get a bit uncomfortable. Obviously, a few of the mates have gone missing. 
Yeah. It's just coming in. Yeah. Oh, fresh ground. Fresh, fresh ground can really be effective. You see why mm. we use that pink elastic, Nick? It's certainly gaffer in a minute. But yeah, it's got How enough. How could you not enjoy it, so this? It's, it's incredible. It's a great fish. We've not had to get 16 metres of pole out. We're fishing top kit and warm. I'm section. beginning to wonder why I don't do it. We're Probably because I ain't got time. But. but I mean, a lot of people scoff at pace fishing, particularly the uh, more well-known top name anglers. But it's a great. Yeah, is that because it's not? It's not mainstream, but it's a. It's not easy. I mean, to do, but yeah, catching. you're obviously making it look really easy. I mean, that was, I mean, look at that. Top lip. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> Another five pound in the net. And that. Yeah, I think what something you just said there that um, a lot of people, uh, oh, mm, pay, mm, and yeah. some of our lads are like, mm, paste, and yet yeah, you're. Oh, I'm, I'm all in. You love it, don't you? I love it. And you're making it look easy. I, lo I absolutely love it. So, is there any. Um, because obviously this is like open water paste and like I say, the, I think the, the real key things are watch your bait, watch your feeding times because it'd be very easy for me to keep filling that full of emp every go. That's one thing I've noticed, you know, you'd think, right, it's pegs full of fish, you've got to keep feeding, but obviously not. No. Because you're... Trying to control... Your hook bait is, feeding the is swim. part of the feed, isn't it? Yeah. Which I'd not really considered that until just now. And I think with hemp, and, it, and, and to a degree micros, you can do it with micros, micros are good. I think it keeps them in your swim a long time. Like that fish has pushed that pace right down the slope, look. Yeah, I see that, but you can see the float. I can still see the float. Probably can't see that on camera, but I can just see it. Just and see you it. can see it. So I'm prepared to just wait that chuck out. It might not might not come back with a fish because I can't read what's going on. But we know your pace is slow because your float's under the water. Yeah. I could actually see my back shot getting uh, pulled under. <laughs> Brilliant. But I think a lot of people get put off because of the uh, miss bite situation. Yeah, because if you haven't quite got it right, you're going to be in and out, in and out. And a lot of people like to pick up, drop back, drop in, back in, lift up, drop back but, in. I mean, you go hard pellet fishing. How many bites do you miss? You miss absolutely hundreds. Hundreds. Why is it? You know, it's going to be the same with pace. You're going to get. It's just obviously the inconvenience of having to come back in every time. Well, I'm going to say there's a little bit more work rate that has to be put into this. But I can assure you, and as we were talking about before, from my experience years ago. Um, it's absolutely worth it because when this game is on, it's on. Oh, it's on. And um, if you've got that in your armoury, I mean, you've mixed up your paste on the bank, you entered it special, watched you mix it. So it's not like, unless you've got a couple of rigs in your box, um, there's no reason why you can't fish paste. If you get here, it's warm, fish are feeding, it's been red hot like it has been. The last two days have been really hot. Um, it's like a nice... Yeah. Nice breeze today and it feels a little bit cooler but fishing weather me, today, isn't it? The, the the water's warm. And that's the key, isn't it? The water's warm. Water's warm. Should we catch one more then out there? Well you've certainly um proved the theory that you can fish it in deeper water. I do think I, I actually think already in, in my match fishing mind, I would have already been thinking about coming closer in now. I thought you were gonna say that because you're getting too many too many indications for my liking. Yeah. I like to be at a situation where I'm still getting by, but I'm not getting <coughs> all the gumph that goes with it. Yeah. So should we demonstrate that in the next? We'll catch one more on this, and then we'll show how you can just start again. It's perfect, Joe, because that's looking into the mind of you, um, and and I think that's some people will persevere, thinking I'm obviously not doing it right. I'm not doing it right, and you're like, no, it's not quite right, and you're going to try it and you're going to move, which isn't permanent. You can go back out there if you want, can't you? Back out there. Brilliant, let's do it. Let's see if I, I'll just fish this truck out then. I love you holding onto that floor like that, that looks great. <laughs> you can just feel the pace, look, feel it. See it, yeah. Oh, see that then? Yeah. I saw it pick it up. Yeah, mm. I just felt a little little bang on the pole tip. Yeah, incredible. But I'm in touch with my bait, and I think that that's. You can't do that with any other bait. No. Because you haven't got the weight. No. Working for you. Another good fish, Mick. Be a nice F1, this one. Yep. Beautiful. Got Not just energy. a big fish bait, of course. These, these no, beauties no. love it as well. Look at that one. He's got some girth on him. 
A bit like me, that one. <laughs> so should we try in a little bit shallower water and... Yeah, let's do it. Let's have a look at it. And show how instant it can be. So that was clearly a great start, Joe, and obviously... Better than I could imagine, actually. <laughs> you answered me questions as to where do you start and what do you do? Well, you just go four foot and that's what you've done. And you quickly caught quite a few fish, but you feel your instinct, which is what I want to know about, your instinct, you just feel that it's like a little bit messy and... It's a little bit messy. And I think deep down you actually know the fish want to be in shallower I think water. it's like the water's so warm. I think they just want to be in shallower water and it, it's not going to be long before we're in the edge let's be honest no because that's where the fish prefer to feed because it's easy that's the level yeah. of temperature that so, they want to be at so how far you come back so what i've done back. i picked a spot i set my float to three foot this time just over yeah and i've plumbed up and found it and it's just my top kit with a little bit of pole on and it's just it's still straight in front of me but i've just come up that slope a little bit more yeah. and it's just getting me an extra hour probably of fishing before the margin so I'm buying myself time even though it looks like I'm fishing the same spot because it's just there in my head it's a totally different water yeah, but you're, cre you're yeah. creeping in so I'm going to do exactly the same nothing changing we're going to put that emp in and hope that then fish and we'll, we should get less indications hopefully maybe some bigger fish maybe a few mess and I can actually see the hemp going away from me like a river <laughs> I can see, I can see the slick the that's moving, going, but the actual, the actual end was going moving. down. So I've just yeah, because we've got this area out on it, which yeah, is yeah, it's just there. But it's not a problem. Obviously, the fish love it. I can see that. The fish love it. So, so I've used the same rig. I've just shortened. You've just shortened it up a bit. Yeah. Foot, because you've just come a foot less. Foot less. Yeah. Same so rig. a few of the viewers might be thinking, my local venue doesn't allow hemp. I've just been thinking about that. Yep. Because I know there's an odd place yeah, where there it's is, not yeah, allowed. Yeah, quite a few. Um, what would you use as an alternative? Micros. Micros. Yep. Softened or just dampened? Yep, that's what I've got here. Just These yep. are the fishery ones and I actually over wet them almost. So they're as big as they can be. Micros are as, almost as good as hen. Really? I'd, I'd be hard to pick between the two. Yeah. It's just hemp, I've always used it. Yeah, it's, you're, com it. yeah you're comfortable. And when you said over wetting them, I think that makes them heavier. Yeah. Yeah. Not just soaking them until they're soft. You've overwet them, over they're yeah. fully swelled. Yeah. I think one of the things about pace fishing, because we're using big floats, we're using thick lime, we're using big hooks, presentation is often overlooked because everyone just thinks of it pace fishing. But you've still got to put your rigging right. Now, we've got tow coming left to right, we've got yep. a bit of wind in my face. I like to put my float up tow, drag it into position like that, yep. pop my paste in, and in my head, that goes down in a nice, even way and you'll sometimes get bites on the drop and i just think that presents the bait really well yeah because you're keeping your oh my laugh see what i said um, about the bigger fish <laughs> <laughs> you're, ke you're keep it before, you know? i think it's quite clear when's it margo <laughs> um it's quite clear when you're laying it in and you do it naturally and i'm pleased Ooh. that you've mentioned it because you've kind of got a loop so your pace is in your pot your line's going down, everything's upside down, but then you're actually letting the surface tension of the water hold the floor and the line, tip your paste in so that everything's separated and, and away. Yeah. I've noticed that. I've also noticed that you drop your float into your tub no. just to... Stop it getting tangled. Yeah. Yeah. I've watched every time thinking, why is he doing that? And it's just to keep everything out of the way. Yeah, because a bit obviously of when on. you've got line here all loose, it can easily go yeah. around your knuckle and your box leg or anything. Yeah. So I just put it in there and <laughs> it's safe as houses, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So you've got looper line, which you then use in water. I notice you dip it on water. Yeah. Just go Flick through that upstream. process. Yeah. Drag it into spot. So that your float is past the end of your pot. Yeah. Which means that when your float goes, uh, your, your paste goes in, it's all separate. Don't interfere. Don't pull against the float either, which means that pace has got that's quite effective isn't it <laughs> I'd, li I'd like to see it's experience and instinct but you're just uh, you're just too clever aren't you that clearly it's is where they want to be yeah. yeah it's made yeah. a difference we've had two bites from carp which is the, the big difference we have like, we had that cruising with foul looks we had yeah. an f1 yeah. which are great fish and a few dinkies a yeah yeah and paste yeah. you want to be catching the bigger fish yeah. And they'll tell you where they want to be. If you're missing bites, it's generally because you're getting liners and you might 
only takes a small tweak coming into slightly shallower water. Yeah, just come at a foot. But it makes such a difference. And again, we've just got that love that nice ghosty just then, and then we've yeah, got this is a good fish. This yeah. is a good fish. So. Yeah, and to the uneducated naked eye, it if you're looking from the side of the lake, they can't tell that you've moved a foot, can you? No. It's a foot in depth, not forget about the distance, it's the depth. And I think we all know as experienced anglers, but it's worth mentioning again, depth is paramount to catching fish. So important. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He's a lad, isn't he? Isn't he? What never ceases to amaze me is that you're fishing where you're playing your fish and that goes against the grain for me. I think I mentioned it earlier about, I fully believe that playing fish, fish activity in your nets, pulls other fish in on the commercial because the water's all of a sudden, it's twice as coloured as here as it was before. Yeah. Fish know that, don't they? They know there's something going on. They're inquisitive, They're aren't inquisitive. they? inquisitive. Yeah. It's a good fish, this is. This is why, I mean, you've got the 18 plus elastic on. You need it. Yeah. Yeah, it's not dragging all the way around late, but you certainly need a bit of um, power, which you've got in that, to get on top of them. I can see now why you've got... You know, quite a strong line and I mean, that's a nice cracking big fish, isn't it? Look at yeah, that. The, the, you know, you've just dunked your landing net in there and caught that great big ghost right over the top, and <laughs> oh, oh, you're gonna you're gonna go straight I mean, back and catch another one, cold. aren't you? Perfect, too cold. He's just like top lip. top lip. Another six pound in the net, probably a bit more. And and the difference is that we've caught two carp. Yeah, as opposed to the other the other fish. And if you're in a match situation or you want to catch, wanna big catch fish. a good day, yeah. A little adjustment like that made all the difference. Made all the difference. So it's, um, and, I, and I think at Cobb House, when we did the, the last one of these that we did, I did that with the pellets. I came into shallower water because it was obvious there, wasn't it, that we were like missing bites, foul looking fish further out. Without a doubt. And then we came into, it was three foot there actually. Yeah. It was a really good depth, and it? it's, uh, yeah, as attractive and tasty as that paste is to them fish, they'll be where they want to be, and it's up to you to do, fish the right way with the right bait, in the more importantly, in the right place. The right place. And, and as I mentioned, they're not scared of your nets anymore. They, they know these fish are tuned into matches, and so don't be worried that you're fishing close to your nets because I don't think the fish are scared of your nets. No. Like that's only just past the end of me. <laughs> Nets. I'm just watching that floor and little fish, and that would a, a, a sail away, and that's why. Yeah, that's that's why. Yeah, it was, um, not a carp sucking and yeah. blowing it were. But again, I was not I wasn't in a rush to strike because no, no, they're gonna hang on to it. It's got it. It's got it. Right, I think that demonstrates that lovely, doesn't it? Proof in the pudding, as they say. So. I think the next step is to get in the margins and... Well, that's the next depth level, isn't get, it? Get so the next, ne next float out, which is, to be honest, this is just a, to get me through the day until that kicks in, because that's when the real fun starts. That's where the journey is. <laughs> so, right, Joe, obviously great out there, and they've started to come in, but the killer spot where I think you have most of your success... Is down the edge. Because when they're down there, they've... They're feeding, they're coming yeah. in for a proper chill. Yeah, and it's just one of those parts of your peg where the fish are a little bit bigger, they're a bit easier to catch in some cases because obviously there's less water to contend with, but it's where that little float comes into its own. Brilliant. And uh, yeah, but there's a, it, again, it's, it's simple fishing, but there's a few things you need to get right. We've got to put some ground bait in because obviously that's the, the essential in yeah. any margin thing. I just, especially, I don't know if it's just this fishery or a lot of fisheries you go to. They just love ground bait, don't they? They do, and it's always down the edges ground. You would never feed ground bait for carp. No, it's weird, isn't it? Over what? Two and a half foot? Yeah, three, two and a half foot. Two and a half foot, and three and half foot. foot. You would never do that. Um, but yet, when they're coming into it, is it, do you think it just holds them a bit more? Or? Yeah, and, and one thing I will say, someone asked me this the other day actually on Facebook, like, how much do you feed? And I literally only put one pot in, but it's having, balls to do it at the right time of day so I wouldn't even look at it until 1 1 30 I wouldn't even feed it and then it's literally just a case of putting one pot full in and starting on it 
as quick as that. So you wait until they're ready to come in. Yeah, you don't try and draw them in. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully my match will be going lovely out there, and I'll be catching some fish out there. And then I'll look at my clock, and it'll be two o'clock. Say, give it a ball, and I'll go straight on it. I don't build it. I don't no. try and gather fish. I just go straight on it because I think once they, especially here, once they want to come in, that's the only place they want to be. Yeah, you've said to me before, you get a window where you can catch uh, fish in the margins, but if you try and make that too early, you don't catch any more. No, you catch the same amount, just over a longer period. Because they're the fish that want to come into this margin. Yeah. 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 The longer you can leave it's it, amazing. without bait, the better. So we're going to put a pot of ground bait in, Mick, to yeah. start with. Really wet that, isn't it? Ever so wet, yeah. It's about as wet as you can get without it turning into a slot. And my whole intention is to fish this with the same length of pole as I was using out there, so top kit and one. Yeah. I actually feed my ground bait short of the pole tip. So I'm only on a cupping kit, and I'm gonna pop that in just there. Now it may be that I catch them there, which sometimes happens, but what happens here, and it happens on a lot of venues, the fish do like a circle. So they actually come along the bank to get to you. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, yeah, And then yeah. they go out. Because you've got me, I'm then, like, why is he putting And there? then they do a loop, and then they come back along the bank to get to you. So I, they want to get to the ground bait, so I'll put that in there, and then I'm gonna fish my pace a section further past to try and intercept them as they get to me and it just keeps things ah, clean that makes sense i've tried to do it without ground bait and just go down the particle route but it just doesn't have the same pulling power um it's it's, it's a bizarre one that is you do need some ground bait in your swim for some reason mm. so to, to create me a little spot i've just got some micros there's a bit of emp in there but there's mainly micros and we're just going to put in little dollops past so the fish are desperate to get to that ground but you can see actually we've, there's actually one on it already yep which is amazing and the, the response is rapid but there's one look because so it's time they want to come in they want to come in yeah they don't which need is why a lot you're of saying bait. you don't need to keep feeding all day yeah there's no point you, <clears throat> you're making the problem worse because you end up with a build up of bait there yeah so we've just got a nice little lump of paste on a few micros in there and we just we've already got a section on we're just going to go past and let's see if we can make it happen. We're nice and tight to that bank. And then we're gonna hopefully see that float do its magic. It looks so um, delicate, but clearly it's not. No. And it's just sat up nice, because obviously your paste is... And you'll see, we're getting so many indications. I can see one swirl in there. It may be that we can catch a few on top of this ground bait. It does, you know, some matches you do catch them on top of your ground bait. But by just but fishing, by fishing past. past but yeah. we, we, we fish past a lot in a, a lot of different methods and a lot yeah. of different venues, don't we? Um, because you, you've got a clean... Clean bottom. Clean bottom and you're not... You, you're kind of... You're concentrating your fish, or at least in your case, as you said, oh. you, you're trying to draw them in but you're trying to catch them before they get to it yeah so that the only thing they can get to is that little bit of loose bait you know the emp and the pellets and your up bait so you kind of if you like setting a double trap aren't you the one of misconceptions of catching large weights of commercial carp is that you've got to absolutely bag and you aren't the big fish you've actually got to just catch it's not always a massive amount in numbers, is it? No. But you've got to make sure you catch them. You can, what I always say is you get over, over rod and a little bit excited. Oh, it's solid, it's solid. But it's about actually hooking them and hooking landing them, them and not, them yeah, not just having loads of tails up in here. You I've can, had it um, a lot. Oh, that was perfect. I just saw that dink. We've had it a lot at this venue where you have a bit of a headache because I'm not going to, you miss bites, of course you do. It's just, Nature of pace fishing, I'm afraid. Like you would if you had worm on, you'd miss bites. Um, but when it's right, this, you can get little spells in your match, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, where you can fill a keep net. Like I'm talking 60 pounds. Yeah. You can do your limit in your net in 20, 25 minutes. I've had that so many times here. And you just get these little golden windows where they want to feed, yeah. the big fish come in, and you can just act on Like this one. Like that one, yeah. They're just big fish. Yeah. And then you catch them quick. Because you've got duck gear on. A bit of a you definite one. You tame that one, didn't you? Yeah. That just shows you, doesn't it? Look, we just put that bit pot yeah. of ground bait in and they're on it straight away. It's incredible. The, the speed at which they... Because we've yeah. left it, 
because it's the time of day, they want to be on it. And that's five pound in no time. No time. That's right. And it was dead efficient, weren't it? So yeah, it's it's that getting your head around that thing. And 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 on some venues you might not have to do that. Um, you know, putting your ground bait in short, you might be able to catch them right on top of it. But here, but here, because they're quite shallow margins. I yeah, think, it is shallow. Yeah, yeah I think because the shelf's quite big. Yeah. I think they actually. Yeah, if you've they've got, got a long time to inspect you before. If you've got two or three carp in that space of 18 inches of water, you probably have too much flesh and not enough mouth. Yeah. Yeah. I also think they they feed quite slow, so they've got a long time to get to you. Do you know that before you when you've got that float on your rig, it looks so unusual. But then when it settles, you're just like, ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I it get makes that. perfect sense when you actually fish with it. Yeah. And it's then the moments that in your match where you do get here, especially like you can get several fish in your swim and your floats dancing around, a bit like that. Really. Yeah, yeah. But like you said, there's no buoyancy in that. And so it, it looks odd. It looks so odd, doesn't it? Like it's sat on the. I, can't, yeah. I call it on the wonk, and it's just sat there on the wonk. Yeah, but it's your pace is just holding just it holding upright, it. and that'll slide away because there's no resistance, no big tip. But I mean, you can see it because it's you've got full length of two and a half inches yeah. of oh, yeah, you can't bristle listen. stuck out. Yeah, it's all about now. It's just you've got to concentrate now because you could end up striking everything because <clears throat> you get so many indications. Yeah. Less water and more fish, isn't there? Mm. Concentration of fish. See how that, Some of them indications on that floor are incredible, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. See, I'm ever so patient with striking. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're gonna miss bites. I like, think a lot of people would want to stroke. Stroke. Yeah. It happens, but like, <clears throat> it's worth the paint, worth the aggro because you get, like, say, you get them little windows in your little session where it all goes to plan, like the jigsaws go together. <laughs> And all of a sudden you catch 50, 60 pound in no time. Yeah. And it'll maybe go funny again, you have to change something. But you go through the pain, don't you? Yeah. Do you know, you'd be convinced that that pace had been eaten three times, but yet yeah, it's still on. It's still on, yeah. Still on because I can see your floats cocked. I'm gonna, I am gonna try over the bait in a minute. Let's try and catch this one. And then, try and all them indications, and your pace is still on, <laughs> and you've hooked a fish. Yeah. There were at least two times when it were, you know, what I call it. It's like it's obviously looks like it sucked it up. Yeah, it's amazing. Don't know what they are, and don't know if anybody knows what they are. But I mean, you've got there's a lot of F1s in this lake, stuff like that, and they, they obviously are a bit more gentle and when they're feeding. So there's obviously that's got consider sometimes you strike at them little jabs and it's a, it's a two pound f1 yeah i've had that quite a lot here but generally when you look a carp it'll leave a belt under it a million miles an hour it'll actually just glide under yeah as they've, they've scoffed it swallowed it and just some off yeah not even realizing they've got a hook in the mouth to yeah be fair. there's no bulk or anything for them to bolt against but yeah it's just ace i love it just good fun, isn't it? You can really? use strong tackle. You can yeah catch fish catch good fish in. as well. Yeah. yeah, nice and close. But you're not you're not wielding a 16 meter pole and right. pinging bait at you. You're not on top of your float. But quality of fish is amazing as well. That's a bit of a little one, that. And it's a chunker. It's got a belly like mine. <laughs> nice fish though. Beautiful. All the same. No, fish are in fantastic condition here. Should we try and catch one more for the fans? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm actually going to change tack and I'm going to come onto my bait <coughs> and give it a little go. Because like I say, some days it is actually better to be over your ground bait. But obviously so you've just, just had a couple see. past it. Past it, yeah. But you've seen a few fish moving on it. fish on this, on my actual bait, so why not try it every now and again? And I was saying to you earlier, like in matches, I purposely keep one side of no bait in it, so like to my right. And then if this goes all a bit chaos, which can happen, you get a lot of fish in your swim. Yeah. I'll just 
Forget about it and start again down this side. When and it's clean. When it's clean. And that can make a big, big difference. And then you can get that little golden run again before it all turns to mess again. <laughs> so that's what you call fishing it on one. On the one, not, yeah. Not you. So it's just enough depth so that your float's not laid flat, mm -hmm. but you've not got it sat right up, and that just... Just keep... delays me from striking. Yeah. Gives me a bit more time to think whether it's a, an actual bite or whether it's just a liner. Yeah. Like we said right at the beginning, you, your rig is not that important, but the float's me mega important. Mega important. Um, and that's why there's no shot, because you're using your, your pace, and you're just, you've got a lump of pace there, Floats work as indicator, mm -hmm. but by the same token, a, a nice long indicator with a long bristle, so you can read what's going off, and you, you're just picking out whether it's a line bite, whether it's a fish just leaning on your line, or whether it's actually picked up your paste, and you can see that, whether it, you've got a sharp sail away, or whether you've got a, a lift, and yeah. it's brilliant. I think I've, I've done, obviously, loads of live matches, and I, I always think there's a, there's a spot within the spot, there's that, if that makes sense, like this bank is pretty straight, There'll be one little spot where the bank, the bottom's a bit cleaner or something. Or just the right depth or yeah, there's a bit of undercut There's always a spot that's Something better. that they prefer. Yeah, there's always something that they... Because I've noticed you're not frightened of, like you did earlier, you're coming in and... Oh, I move you, up and down the bank all the time. You're up and down, yeah. which... Which is bizarre, you know, isn't it? Look at that. Yeah, because when you see people plumbing up with precision, and they're just to make sure... It's become sure OCD fishing, hasn't it? I, I, Everyone's right got to be so precise. Right? Do you know that? Well, that was, it's that was got, it's got that, it in its it? mouth and it will like, obviously try and reject it, but it's got it. That's sometimes the difference coming closer to you can have because you've got less fish and it actually can work in your favour because we're getting less indications. Yeah. But when one did actually come in, we caught him nice and clean. And hopefully, it's a nice little demo for everyone. Well, I'm saying it's a bit of a masterclass job. Oh, it's a big F1, that is, mate. There's a beauty. That might be why that bite was such a yeah. vigorous. Oh, and it handled it, it perfect. Well, I've learnt tons of stuff today, Jock. Look at that. Lovely. And oh, it's, it's, not been, it's not been like easy down the edge, but you've, you've made it work and you've showed us how to make changes that have made all the difference to your catch. And amazing. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully you can all get on there and uh, give them a go, because it's not complicated. No. The rigs are simple, the bait's simple. You just got to get out and try, haven't you? It's perfect. Thanks very much. Appreciate it.